Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything. Welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to be talking about wire wheels, different types, how to use them, and why you need to implement them into your shop. Check it out. All right, so over here on the bench, I've got an assortment of different types of wire wheels. Now, most people are familiar with a wire wheel on like a bench grinder. Um, and that's sort of the first way that I used one and the first application for kind of cleaning material with one that I ever experienced when I was a young kid, learning how to make stuff and my dad kind of teaching me stuff in our garage and shed. Since then, I've obviously expanded that and I've done a lot of different work, especially in restoration and metalworking and wire wheels are a huge part of my workflow. Now, that being said, I kind of always thought there was only a couple different types and was whatever was on the shelf at Home Depot was what was out there. I've come obviously to learn that there are a ton of different types of wire wheels, some for very specific applications and some that can do really, really great stuff if you use them in the right way. So before I get into showing you some demos on how these work, I'm going to explain the different types quickly. So you've got crimped wire wheels like this, which are in sort of a fan configuration, and they also can be found in a cup configuration like this or like this one over on the angle grinder. And these are great because you can get into tight places. You can imagine that these wires being loose like that will flex and they'll be able to move into tight spots when you're trying to remove loose material. But when you're trying to remove really stuff, stuck on stuff, if you're trying to get off mill scale, these are not really the best option, but you can get them on a mandrel like these, which I'm sure you've seen before in large size and small sizes. But the type that I like to use when I'm doing harder materials and trying to remove mill scale or trying to remove anything that's really stuck on there is a knotted wire wheel like this. The other thing that you're gonna find is when you use a wire wheel like that, that these crimped wheels are going to inevitably get loose and they're gonna come out of their kind of captive shell here. And that can be kind of dangerous. You always wanna make sure that you wear proper protection with these, prefer preferably like a leather apron so that these don't get stuck inside your clothes because I have brought these little uh, wires home and it's not so great when you find them on your couch. So if you're using a tougher material, you can use a knotted wire wheel like this. And you can get these in a cup brush, as you can see here, or you can get them in that fan configuration. One of my favorites is these smaller knotted wire wheels like these two right here. So this one is on a quarter inch die grinder, a pneumatic grinder, and this is a single point wire wheel. And this is a little knotted single point wire. And what this is great for is getting into really tight spots. And this will actually fan out just a little bit, but you can get really controlled removal of rust and material with something like this. Now, one of the most common types of wire wheels you're gonna come across in a shop environment is one that's on a bench grinder. Now, this is a six inch bench grinder with a one inch wide wheel on it, which is really nice. A lot of times these can be a little on the thin side and they can flex a lot. But again, with these crimped wheels, you also always have to worry about these little wires flying off. So you're gonna to wanna to wear really good eye protection and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're holding on to your piece really tight because this little gully here is a perfect spot for material to get sucked into and then jam on your grinder. One of the other things that is really important to mention about wire wheels, and especially when you're selecting the type of wire wheel that you're gonna use for a particular project, is what material the wire is actually made out of. Now, obviously one of these is very different from the others. This one is brass wire and you can do some really cool work with brass wire, especially when it comes to steel and decorative work, which I'll show you in a little bit. But the key difference between these two is that one of these has carbon steel wire and one of these has stainless steel wire. And you might not know why that's important, but if I introduce this piece of material, you might be able to guess. Now, if I had some surface imperfection on this or I wanted to get a brushed finish on this piece of aluminum, and I used a carbon steel 
wire wheel, I'm actually introducing microscopic pieces of carbon into this aluminum, which makes this aluminum no longer marine grade because this little bit of carbon is going to rust. There's going to be little flecks of rust inside there. It's the same as if you were to be using uh, sandpaper or a grinding wheel that was on steel and then switch over to aluminum. So anytime you're using a non-ferrous metal or a stainless steel itself, you always want to make sure that you're using a stainless steel wire wheel. A lot of people don't realize this and I've had people reach out to me and wonder when they're doing a restoration why things are rusting when they shouldn't be able to rust. And a lot of time it's because they're contaminating their material with either a wire wheel, a grinding wheel, sandpaper, or like a scotch Brite or surface finishing pad. So that's super important. Now on these fared ones, it's pretty clearly labeled. This one says stainless steel and this one says carbon steel. But if you're ever not sure, look for a CS or an SS on your grinding or wire wheel consumable because that CS is gonna be for carbon steel and the SS is gonna be for stainless steel. Really important thing to know just so that you don't wind up ruining something in the future. So one other option that you're gonna come across when you're looking at wire wheels and kind of stripping things like this is nylon or carbon ceramic grit wheel. So this one is a little arbor mount and this one actually is a, this is actually a 120 grit brush so this will give you a really nice finish and it's going to take away and do a lot less damage to your sensitive materials because it is a nylon with some abrasive impregnated into it as opposed to a wire itself. And this one is for the bench grinder. I use this one a lot for kind of light finishing. They don't take away as much material and they do wear out a lot faster than wires, but they are a good option. So I'm gonna do some demos of some of the wheels that I just showed and kind of how you can use them, especially in restoration and rust removal projects. But before I do that, I wanna just talk a little bit about the PPE that's required when you're using wire wheels, especially when you're running at a high RPM. So on the angle grinders that I showed, they run about 9,000 RPMs and all these wire wheels are rated to go above that speed, but the faster that that wheel is going, obviously the faster it's going to work, but the more that those little wires are going to have the opportunity to project off of that and fly across the room. Now, the last thing you want is one of those in your eye. So as you can see, you always want to have a pair of safety glasses around, but even better when you're using a wire wheel is to wear a face shield. The other thing is whatever you're displacing, whatever rust you're removing or paint or mill scale or anything, you're putting that out into the air. So if you watched my 10 tools under $30, you know the first thing I talked about was respirators and PPE. At the very least, you wanna wear a dust mask and be in a well-ventilated -ventil area. But if you can get yourself a respirator, especially one with a good filter, that's gonna help a lot. For this purpose, for me, I'm gonna be wearing one of these, which is a VersaFlow, um, essentially a powered respirator, a papper unit. What I really like about this is it accomplishes the respirator aspect and the full face shield aspect with some covering on the top of your head so you're not getting stuff kind of swooping up over your head and getting onto your hat or whatever else. So I'm gonna get this spacesuit set up and then we'll tackle some little projects. One other thing to note about using a wire wheel is that they naturally want to grab onto stuff. So they want to grab onto your shirt. They want to grab onto your sleeves, especially if you have strings in a hoodie. You'll notice that there's no strings in this sweatshirt because I always take them out. And what I like about this particular setup is that there's a belt strap here, which keeps my shirt real tight, but I'm always very cautious to make sure that I'm real, real close to my workpiece and I'm giving a little bit of distance away from my body with the grinder so that I don't wind up getting in a hairy situation uh, I have had one of these grab my shirt and let me tell you, it is absolutely terrifying. This will 100% cut your skin. So you wanna be really, really careful. And like I mentioned before, if you have an apron, an apron can be good, especially a leather one, but keep it tight. So right here, I've got a little 70 pound anvil and this thing has many, many years of gunk and grime on it. And this would be a perfect application to use a wire wheel. Now, most people are gonna have a angle grinder like this, which is just gonna run at one speed. So I'll show you how that works. But what I really like to use when I'm doing any of this kind of work, especially inside, is a variable speed angle grinder like this Milwaukee one. So this one works like so. You've got a dial here on the back, and right now it's on the slowest speed, which is 2,800 RPM. And then it'll go all the way up to, I think, 12,000 RPM. And you can see how nicely this works, but we'll start with something that's a little more common and I'll just kind of run through a couple of the different types of wheel. We can see what they're capable of.
to deal with this ledge where I have to get inside a corner, I can use something like this, which will kind of blend in there a little bit better. Like I mentioned, we've got this little single point, which I can get into a tight corner like that really nicely. Earlier I mentioned the bench grinder, and the bench grinder is a great way to use a wire wheel in a really controlled manner because you can hold the work and you can utilize the sides of the wheel to kind of mush into softer areas and use the front of the wheel where you've got really stubborn material. And these will do a great job on that hammerhead that was over on the bench to clear some of the rust off. So I mentioned earlier, there is a cool trick you can do with a brass wire wheel. Now you wanna make sure that it's actually a brass wheel, not a brass plated wheel. This one has solid brass wires. And what you can do is by applying some heat to a piece of steel and then hitting it with a brass wire wheel, you can actually, what's called brass the metal, which will allow it to hold onto that gold color. It can be a really cool decorative effect. I'll show you on this piece of tube that I used in a previous video that I've ground already to a really smooth finish on one edge. I'm gonna be using a map gas torch for this just to get it hot. So I'm heating up the metal. I'm not trying to get it red hot, but I'm kind of watching it to see if it does gain any color. And I'm just trying to heat it evenly uh, and I'm not, going to a very specific temperature, but I am just trying to get a good amount of heat soaked into it so that the brass can kind of transfer over. You can see some of the impurities actually pulling out of the metal because it's been sitting in the scrap bin for a while. There's probably a little bit of moisture built up in there. Now we'll take the grinder with the wire wheel and just run it across. We'll do a little more heat and a little more brass. You can see the gold really takes and it just looks really, really cool on a piece of steel like that. And that was all achieved pretty quickly with that brass wire wheel. It's a pretty resilient finish too. And doesn't scratch off or chip off like plating.
All right, that about does it for this video. I hope this was helpful. You know, wire wheels are such a great tool to have in the shop and understanding the different types can really help you work on specific projects. As you saw when I was working on this anvil, there was just even in this one project, there was a couple of different uses for different types of wheels just to get into the specific areas on such a large piece. You can imagine on a smaller piece, being able to use one of these kind of smaller wheels or that single point one can really kind of make or break the success of the project if you need a wire wheel. I do a lot of restoration stuff here. So for me, wire wheels are something that I use almost every single day. I always have one sitting on a grinder kind of ready to go and they're great for stripping off paint and rust and everything. Um, if you don't feel comfortable using an angle grinder, get yourself a wire wheel for your bench grinder first. It's a lot safer. It feels a lot less scary to hold the piece in your hand, especially if it's a longer piece that you can get kind of away from and use it in the bench grinder. Now, a lot of people will put these on a buffer because they feel like it's the same thing. I found that not having that shroud around the backside of the wheel when using a wire wheel on the buffer can be really dangerous. So you, I would recommend staying on a bench grinder, use something that has some guards and just try to be safe. Again, keep your clothes really tight, wear a respirator, wear eye protection and all those different things. One of the things I forgot to mention is that when you are using a stainless wheel versus a carbon wheel, Try not to use the stainless wheels on carbon-based materials like mild steel because then that, car that stainless wheel is going to get some of that carbon material impregnated into the stainless and it will deposit onto the aluminum or stainless that you're using. So if you buy a stainless wire wheel, only use it for stainless aluminum or brass, any non-ferrous metal, something that you're not going to be able to pick up and put back down on something that you don't wanna rust. Like I showed you, I really like that little brassing trick. I think that's a great thing to kind of have in your arsenal, especially if you wanna jazz up a piece. I think I've got a little bit of an idea on how to use that to make myself something for the shop now that I've passed 200,000 subscribers. And that's just something else I wanna mention. I really appreciate everybody following along. At this point in time, at the very end of December of 2021, I just passed 200,000 subscribers here on YouTube. It has been unbelievable to get the support from everybody here on YouTube, and I really do enjoy making these videos. So if you like this video, please leave a comment down below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me. If you want to check out any of the wire wheels that I showed in this video, check them all out down in the description. All of these were from my friends over at Ferret Abrasives. One of the things that I've noticed in my long history of working with my hands is that buying quality products really makes a difference, especially when it comes to a consumable like a wire wheel. If you buy the cheap stuff, the wires are going to go flying everywhere. They're going to wind up in your clothes and your hair. It's no good. So buy something that's got a little bit more quality. You are going to get a little bit more longevity out of it. Again, my name is Chris Zephyr, Make Everything. Follow me right here at Make Everything Shop on Instagram. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much to everybody that's been following along. I really, really appreciate it. Have a great new year, and I'll see you on the next video.